countdown. The Gonzaga Bulldogs now less than 24 hours away from history. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nadine Woodward. Tip off for the team's first ever NC2A Final Four appearance. Three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We have Zag Stravaganza for you tonight. Caroline Rourke is at GU where students are finishing up classes. They're more than ready for tomorrow's big game. Jack Ferris is in Phoenix with Zag fans. They're enjoying the sun, waiting not so patiently. Grace Ditzler caught up with some Spokane accountants having fun with a Karnowski lookalike contest to get into the spirit. First, Keith Oso and Will Sherrod join us from the University of Phoenix Stadium. And guys, that place is massive. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty pretty good way to put it. I mean, it, it's a giant football arena, and they put this tiny little basketball floor in the middle of it, and it's you, you feel like your echo goes for days in here, and you got to try to figure out how to hit a jump shot. We saw the exact same thing in Houston two years ago in the Elite Eight run with the, with the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I think that was even a little bit bigger than this building, but trying to figure out how to get acclimated to such a big environment in a such a short amount of time will... That's not a lot of fun. And the Zags don't necessarily play in the biggest arena themselves, yeah. about 6,000 in the kennel. We saw them maybe have a tough time adjusting Salt Lake City in their first round of the NCAA tournament. Didn't shoot well at all against South Dakota State. Now they have an even bigger adjustment playing inside the toaster here in Phoenix, and we'll see if it impacts them like it did in Houston two years ago. Uh, I mean, it takes, you know, a few shots to get used to, but, I mean, we have a practice coming up right after this. I think that's going to help us out. I think just getting used to the floor, getting used to the environment will help us out. I mean, shoot or shoot, right? And then my ball was going in, so I'm feeling real good about it. So, uh, I mean, people talk about it, but uh, we'll see how it affects us. But it seemed like it didn't do too much to us out today. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it just it, 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 you just got to stay focused. The rim's 10 foot high. And you just got to follow through. If you make it, you make it. You miss it, you miss it. You can't concentrate on all the backdrop because everybody has to play on that rim. So it's not like you're at a certain disadvantage. Um, it's going to be fun for everyone, though. And, yes, the rims are still 10 feet high, but the backdrop is like you're shooting into outer space. So that's <laughs> kind of the problem. We'll see if it impacts the Zags. They shot so well, especially from three against Xavier. Big reason why they beat the Musketeers. Might need the three ball tomorrow. We'll see if it impacts them at all. Gonzaga is saying all the right things about it not impacting their game. But we could cue up the sound bite from two years ago. It would sound <laughs> exactly the same. And will it impacted the game in a big, big way. Well, we'll see them, well, coming up tomorrow afternoon how this Zag team can handle this big arena. But coming up a little bit later in today's 5 o'clock show, we're going to talk to the Zags about the possibility of bringing a national championship home to the city of Spokane. But for now, with Will Sherrod, I'm Keith Oso in front of what he likes to call the big toaster. <laughs> KXOY 4 I love it. Thanks a lot, guys.